Ferris, you're 31 now. What is in store for the next nine years? Ooh, <laughs> that's a long stretch. <laughs> well, um, I think, uh, of course, I'm, I mean, I enjoy triathlon so much and racing so much and the lifestyle that uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, uh, you know, I can keep up for a couple of years more and um but you know nobody can say what what happens after 34 or 35 i mean of course nobody can say anything because if whether you, you have an accident and then you know your career is finished but um if everything goes normal then uh, i think till 35 uh, i should be able to to race with the best and uh, and then we'll see you know how many years you can uh, put on um because you have to be motivated mentally and and physically able to to maintain and uh, but we'll see and 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 i have no uh, no master plan for what happens after the professional career um i think i'd like to coach but not as many other pro tri former pro triathletes or pro or active pro triathletes do um age groupers i think i'm more interested in coaching uh uh, youths, you know, teenagers, young guys that that want to 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 reach the top. This is um, more interesting for me. Of course, that uh, doesn't make you a rich man, but but I think that would be more satisfying for me. So elite juniors is yeah. really what you'd like to focus on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People between you know sixteen and twenty two, um, and try to help them reach their goals and and reach to the top. Where they're, they've already shown some kind of potential. Maybe they're a, a junior national swimmer. They, they, they've got some kind of cross-country background. Something where they've already shown some potential. Yeah, and where they already have a lot of technical skills. You know, I don't want to be in the water and teach somebody how to, to do uh, crawl, uh, to swim crawl style. Hey, that's the way I swim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it's it's not about uh, I don't want to be so much uh, involved into you know teaching the basic skills, but more like into developing those skills. And what what do you do with coaching now, as far as your own coaching and getting coached? Well, I coach myself, but I don't coach anyone else. Um, it's just uh, just just me, and uh, and of course, it's not like you're you know everything just comes to you um uh, you know in your sleep and, and you dream the right programs um it's um of course always a process you talk to other pros you talk to uh sports scientists um um you read a lot and uh, this is how you know everything comes together and then you make up your own plan so it works for a lot of people having a coach but there's plenty of people that they can do it without having a coach. It works for them too. And the point being that you got to find that balance and what works for you. Definitely, yes. It's, that is with us. We know so very little about triathlon training. And there is no coach in the world that can tell you um, if you do this and that program, you'll become world champion. This just doesn't happen. And the sport is so young. And our training is more like a black box and, you know, you train and something happens, but you really don't know about the interaction between swimming, running and, and cycling. For example, you run five hours a week. How does that affect your cycling? Do you become a better cyclist because of the benefit of the more training? Or at which point does it turn around that you become a worse cyclist because uh, you just put so much strain on your on your uh, muscle and nobody knows exactly about that and this is on the one hand frustrating because you just don't know on the other hand it's, it's exciting because then it's on you to uh, to discover how it works for yourself and uh, and there were, are so many pro triathletes that have a completely different program and uh, I mean, it's basically uh, you have to do a lot of endurance sport. Yeah, but right. th there it ends, you know, and some people do a lot of weightlifting in addition to that. Some people don't. And so there are so many things that are just secrets and uh, you yourself discover them. 
That's cool. That's part of what it's about. I think yes. I and and the 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 interaction of the sports is uh, yeah. It's just exciting and interesting to see. And for yourself, I think it's very satisfying that uh, you can show up at a uh, open water swimming race and you know you you won't become last. You're just there. I mean, unless you go to championships of some some reason, but for some reason, but. You know, if you just show up at an ordinary race, then you can you can be part of that group as well. You can show up at a running race, you can show up at a at a cycling race, and you just can enjoy it. And you have the fitness, and uh, and you're just part of that. Like we, I mean, there might be some things that need an extra skill, technical skill, but uh, at least you have the physical abilities to to enjoy all that, and you're not restricted because you are physically not able. To do some some of those things, you because you, just your basic fitness is so good. Yeah, uh, along those lines, um, that's how you were able to do the mountain bike race this year. Definitely yes, because my mountain bike skills aren't that good. But of course, I mean, I have all that basic fitness and that cycling power, and and that helps, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it helped you to survive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Ferris. Thank you so much. Really appreciate talking to you. I hope you have a great year. Thank you. You're most welcome.